along the lines of like the Ninja Turtle craze. Yes. With the mutant, with, with how successful Ninja Turtles was, then there all of a sudden there's Bucky O'Hara and Intergalactic Rabbit there. What, I've never seen this. Like I didn't even know it exists. And I like Rock Lords. Like their cats that had that same look, same feel. Like even probably the act, oh, it works. Yes. It works, dude. Gargoyles. You want me to predict this is be like Microsoft stock someday where you're like, I should have bought it. I should have bought it when it was cheap. It was Especially only 15 with the bucks. new line coming out. It's gonna Let's do 100 a piece, 200 bucks together. What's money between friends? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends, you know. Like, I'm the one getting paid, and you're getting toys. <laughs> so I'll give you Price $200 versus, um, in, in pennies. Oh, okay. Get out. 100 video. <laughs> Hey guys, Justice Curry with you for another exciting adventure. Today, I'm with my buddy, Halloween Jack. We're gonna check out his inventory because he's a hustler like me and we're gonna check out his personal collection at the very end so you're not gonna wanna miss this. So without further ado, welcome Halloween Jack. Hey. For inviting me to your uh, your house, this is really wonderful. I've never been here before, but you only live, you know, 45 minutes from yeah, me. Yeah. So uh, I went to the journey. I wanted to check out his collection, film it, and share with you guys at home. Ah. Halloween Jack's tricks and treats. Oh. My fans of tricks and treats. Oh, okay, yes, you have Halloween Jack. You even have a banner right here. Yeah. Oh wow. Made for me by, made for me by my buddy Roger Scholes. Yes. Awesome straight up artist, dude. Very cool, dude. Yes, um, yes. And, but I decided to decorate, because you can go to any toy show, and you know, you might find signs for a shop if they've got it, but there's really no, you know, it's usually just tables with toys. Yes. I like to make it an event. You do, and I noticed from your personal collection, you have a, uh, you like, you know, clowns and horror and the Halloween theme. Oh yeah. Which, I'm a big baby when it comes to clowns, like, well, I started getting anxiety when I saw your Halloween toys, I'm like, oh! Well, it's the one day of the year that people like you get to catch up to people like me. Yes, touche, touche. Uh, well, let's kind of look, so, this is stuff, your inventory, so. Yes, this is my inventory. This is, most of this stuff is gonna make its debut at the Jackson Toy Collectible Show next Saturday on the 24th at the Jackson Fairgrounds. Um, and this, you might be watching this five, 10 years from now, but if you see something, I'm gonna put Halloween Jack's contact information down in the link uh, the description below there'll be a link and you can reach out to him and if he doesn't have what you're seeing out here maybe he's got something or he'll write down your name and uh, make some kind of deal with you in the future because he's got a lot of really neat toys let's talk about some of them shall you sure uh, first of all I'm seeing some just neat random lines that I don't see too often like typically I stay within my wheelhouse of G.I. Joe, He-Man, but I also have an appreciation of some 90s movies such as uh, Jim Carrey's The Mask. I, to tell you the truth, I didn't even know they made a toy line. I really didn't. Oh, uh, you think that's something? Yeah. How about that? What do we got here? Oh my gosh. Yes, 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 yes. Even though this movie tanked at the box office, uh, Demoli or sorry, Last Action Hero was a personal favorite of mine with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I love the uh, the premise of the whole movie. If you haven't watched it, check it out, Last Action it, Hero. It's, it's worth a watch. It is, isn't it? Like I said, you're not going to see movies. You know, even though it's a bad movie by today's <laughs> standards, it's still a pretty good movie. It is. It is. It's fun. 
but it's got its own unique premise to it. Yes, yes. They made toy lines. Uh, you know, this is now 1993. Holy crap, it is almost 30 years old. Um, and it's still about 20 bucks. And I'm guessing, I don't know about you, because I'm seeing some 90s toys, such as like Alien and whatnot. They're still relatively priced. You know, we got 15 bucks on some of these. Um, Terminator. Yeah, Terminator. What's your thoughts? Do you think they're ever gonna get to the double, triple, quadruple values? You know, turn from $20 to $40 someday? Um, in all likelihood, yeah. I mean, it's like you said before in your videos, it, it's the collection community and as the collectors, you know, as older collectors pass on and get yep. out of the hobby, we've got younger people that are coming up into the hobby looking for their childhood. Right. What they grew up with, mm -hmm. stuff that they loved. I mean, like, I really don't know a thing about Mighty Ducks, but <laughs> there's a toy line. Yes, there is. And, and I've got some. Oh, you're kidding me. You got Mighty Ducks toy lines? Oh, yeah. Well, look, I've even got Waterworld. Oh, my. Matthew Rodriguez. Even though he doesn't watch my videos, he's a big fan of Waterworld. Um, but what I think and what kind of my thoughts are, are the same line as Halloween Jack. Eventually, these kids from the 90s are going to have disposable income. They're going to get to our age in our early 40s, and they're going to start buying and reclaiming their childhood. Um, and that's going to make these prices go up. Right now, they're in their maybe late 20s. They're trying to work. They don't have all the, the money to be spending on toys. Like I saw early to mid 80s G.I. Joe and He-Man prices have doubled, quadrupled since I started, you know, seven years ago. It's 2021 right now. Um, it's because my generation, our generation is starting to have that money just like Star Wars. Star yep. Wars hit that big peak yeah. all those years ago. Um, but yeah, my, my guess is these kinds of things are going to start increasing in value. Or that, this, gargoyles. You want me to predict this is be like Microsoft stock someday where you're like, I should have bought it. I should have bought it when it was cheap. It was Especially only with the bucks. new line coming out. It's going to make people more nostalgic for the old stuff. That do, that definitely happens. Um, so when they reboot something, and if it's a successful reboot like Gargoyles, then people will go, oh, I remember that. And they'll seek this. And it's a supply and demand. you got limited supply. The demand increases. So that makes the prices go up, 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 up. That's neat. Uh, what else we got? Some Ninja Turtles. Uh, the monster version. Yeah, 75 bucks. I remember. Yeah, increase in turtles as of late. Oh, yeah. Um, my guess is it's still going to be on the incline. I mean, you could still buy an original uh, carded Donatello, Raphael um, hardhead for, you know, 150 in 2021 money. I bet you it'll be 300 bucks five years from now. And then I got those as well. Oh, look at these ones. Here, let me get a little closer for people at home. I don't even know about this line real well. Uh, it'll uh, be after me. Yeah, a mutual friend of ours by the name of Jeremy DeWitt. Oh, yeah. Uh, very what up, excited Jeremy? seeing this. <laughs> I bet. He's the uh, moderator. If you are a Ninja Turtles fan, go on Facebook. Uh, I think it's called TMNT Forever. Like, the number four and then ever check that out and there's a discussion page as well as a buy and sell he's the creator moder moderator of that group as well as another michigan local um what i've had my eye on because i remember personally buying these when i was 14 15 16 years old is these aliens i really like them um do, are they gonna ever go crazy in price I don't know I don't care I personally like them I'm gonna try to buy a bunch of them from Halloween Jack later today we'll see if uh, we can make a bundle price we'll see yeah, we'll, we'll see we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I remember having when I first got into the hobby uh, I found a guy who had a bunch of factory cases of these and he only wanted like two bucks five bucks a piece <laughs> and I was like, nah, I don't care about I want G.I. Joe, I want He-Man. And that's that's something I kick myself to this day for not buying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, some of these actually have the original price tags on them from when they were in the store. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at that. Eight bucks. Eight bucks back in the day. That's crazy. Yeah, eight bucks of 1995, what, five, 93 money? 92, actually. 
Um, but then again, when you look at the original prices for Masters of the Universe back in the 80s, and you're like, whoa. <laughs> Speaking of Masters of the Universe, so what is your motivation for selling? Like, why do you even go to booths and, and set up at shows? Um, I kind of got bit by it. Thanks to my friend Joe Reed, who runs the Geek Stuff Garage Sale, I went there mainly just purging part of my collection. Yeah. And um, it kind of turned into the, uh, a, a habit of, you know, I use this toy money to support my toy money, to, uh, you know, ever grow my collection. Mm. And, and it also gives me an outlet, because every once in a while, I'm sure you'll agree totally, Sometimes you gotta purge. You do. You gotta give. You know, you, stuff. You, you pick up stuff and it's like, you know, this just doesn't speak to me the way it used to. Yeah, yeah. And you have it, you appreciate it for a while. And then you pass it on for someone exactly, else to enjoy. Exactly, exactly. Speaking of uh, purging, what's the, the story on. Uh, and I'm, I know I'm gonna lose about 500 subscribers when I make this joke. The modern day Beanie Babies. Is this a, a purge of yours or how did you yeah, acquire? Yeah, yeah, I'm a huge Deadpool fan. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I've got a, well, I've got a very nice Deadpool collection at home. Cool. Here in the basement. Yeah, we'll check but, it out. Um, you know, they just make so damn many Funko Pops. Never ending. Yeah, and it just, it, I was looking at them and it's like, if I keep buying all the Deadpool Funko Pops, I'm not going to have any room in my collection room for anything else but Deadpool Funko Pops. Yeah, yeah. So I went through, I purged, I, I kept the ones that I really dug, and I opened them, which makes him cringe, but I opened them. <laughs> yep, yep. And um, I'm just purging out just what I don't a, want. Get rid of a few of them. Um, so I showed you some loose Master of the Universe. You always have pretty decent prices. I like going. Uh, going through your booth because you're not trying to, you know, ask eBay buy it now prices. You're no, going, I, I want to, you know, sell these things. Yeah. I do use eBay as a pricing tool. You have to. Yeah, just it gives you an idea, and then I'll like, I'll, I'll go a couple bucks below, yes. depending on what it is. I mean, you guys, look at an almost full uh, file card. Uh, mutt. Is that junkyard? He's only mutt? missing junkyard, unfortunately. Yeah, well, that's pretty neat. The Uzi in there and everything. You know, GI Joe is my passion. And the last time I saw you, I picked through this and bought a few from you. Um, one of the little tent sets. Mail setups. away packs. And some modern. Oh, a snake eye. Or yeah, snake eyes. And some modern ones. You're yeah, like 50, a, 15 bucks the whole bag. Just take it. <laughs> yep, yep. How do you handle when people come up to you for bundling? Do you bundle and kind of work with them with pricing? Um, I've been known to do that. I mean, if you're gonna buy, if you pick up like, it's like, hey, what's the best you can do on this one figure? It's listed on the bag. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if you're grabbing up like a couple of hand, uh, you know, like a handful of six, seven figures, yeah, yeah, you I can come, I, I can work with them, come yeah. down on my prices a little bit. I mean, you know, you're helping me, I'm helping you. I mean, you know, at the last toy show we did in Grand Rapids, it was kind of funny because somebody really went digging into my uh, Toy Biz X-Men bin from like the 90s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I sell them at four bucks a pop, buy four, get one. Yeah. And this guy bought five sets of that. Oh, wow. It came to like, it was like 89 some odd dollars. Like, mm -hmm. you know what? I suck at math. I math bad. 80 bucks were good. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, yeah. I knocked off a couple. He, he was happy with he that. He was happy. And then somebody grabbed out of my Transformers bin right next to him. I had a, a modern area from the Com Combiner Wars, a complete Menasaur. Mm. Priced at 75 bucks, which is a deal. You cannot find a complete Menasaur. You know, granted, he's loose, but still, you cannot find him cheaper than that. Yes. It's like, are you willing to sell this for 65? No. <laughs> and that's that's uh, a good point. When you have certain ones that are like, you know that's the value of it and it brings people to your booth, you know, every seller is gonna ask or have different practices. Some people are like, I want it all gone today. I don't wanna bring nothing home. Or some people are like, you know what? You uh, you set up at a lot of shows. You yeah. wanna get rid of all your best stuff. Right you know, that if, in there if, for if, half if value. I get, if I get rid of all my stuff, what do I have for the next show? Yeah, exactly. I understand. You know, you're putting pressure on me to have to go hunting. <laughs> but I like the 
haunting. The oh, hunting is so much oh, fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you like the socializing aspect of going to the shows yep. and talking and meeting. I mean, that's how we got to know each other yeah, yeah. from the shows. I mean, when I, when someone picks up something from my booth and they like, I've been looking for this. Like, and I talk to them about it for a minute. I really, really enjoy that. Yes. I love hearing their stories. Me too. About, you know, I had one guy come up and was like, man, I have been here all day. I have not seen one person have anything visionaries at all. And I'm like, I got a couple. He's like, you do it. <laughs> yes, yes, that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, what I noticed too down here, look at, we got some Space Jam. Again, it's gonna date the video, but I've been seeing that they're make, they relaunched this whole thing, uh, made a new movie of Space Jam. Is it priced? Yeah, well, actually what it is, is I'm selling that Space Jam stuff as a whole lot. Oh! I, I went, I priced it, I was pricing it all up on eBay. Yes. And the, the whole lot together came to about $400. I'm asking 300 for all of it. Gotcha. So you guys. All sorts of things. Here, I'll yeah, hold yeah, it. Yeah. Hold it. I'll show people. I <laughs> did. That's awesome. Space Jam. <laughs> so neat. But I, I bet you, if someone was to buy this for three hundred, again, when we start looking at the math, and those people that grew up and, and had this as a kid, are uh, this stuff's just going to go up in value someday. J.C. Penney's tag on there. That's cool. I love seeing the price tags and whatnot with a bunch of the collectible figures. With MJ, wow, that's awesome. That's really cool. Sylvester and all those fun guys. Yeah. Neat. Let's look around at, oh, you may remember this, guys. Bring this camera over here. One of my other uh, videos I did with Mesquicon, I think it was. We talked with Halloween Jack, and I think he actually did a demonstration with this Slimer um, gumball machine, and I, it made noise and lit up. Am I yeah, correct? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh yeah! Oh, Man Ranger, yeah. Slim Jim holder. Snap into a Slim Jim. Wow. Yeah. Um, this the gumball machine is for sale. Yeah. It's one of my pricier items. I also have been known to sell gum out of it. I'm not selling gum out of it right now, just with the state COVID, of affairs yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. That's also why, like, you know, like you've seen in my booth before, I have that dollar bin. Mm -hmm. um, that would just be too hard. I don't know that much. No, and what, I've never seen this. Like, I didn't even know it exists. And I like rock lords. Like, I dig them. They're pretty neat. It's crazy. And it has, it's like a rock, it's heavy. Yeah, it's got some weight to it. It does, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. We got some He-Man vehicles, some Star Wars. My eyes drawn over here, Halloween Jack. What do we, <laughs> we got going on here? Oh, these are a line called Street Sharks. Oh, I know them very well. <laughs> they had maybe, what was it, one season yep. on television? Mm-hmm. Uh, they, these were kind of along the lines of like the Ninja Turtle craze. Yes. With the mutant, with, with how successful Ninja Turtles were, then there, all of a sudden there's Bucky O'Hara and Intergalactic Rabbit. There's the Street Sharks. There's the Extreme Dinosaurs. Oh my Here's the thing. You don't see Street Sharks in the pack. I don't. Much that's why all. my eyes, that's one of the very first thing I saw. And these aren't just someone saved the box these have not been opened it has oh. the original twist ties on them and everything i don't see them at shows i no, literally no. don't see these them. these sat in a basement for 15 years and i stumbled across them oh, oh. and isn't i was that a just rush like, isn't that oh, just yeah. a rush yeah. when you find them because i mean obviously he's a picker like me we already discussed he finances his personal collection just like i do by flipping toys so he knows that wonderful feeling of oh, buying, yeah. getting a bargain finding these toys in some old basement that are just, you know, going to be lost to time or thrown away at a garage sale. Now, a funny thing that happened on that pick, I had a, a, a real good buddy of mine, Isaac. He's helped me in my shows where you might, you know, y'all might see him. He's, he's the Grizzly Adams guy. We see at all the local Michigan toy shows. Real nice guy. He is a huge, huge Pirates of Dark Water fan. Mm. He's got a complete set of the figures, loose and sealed on the card. 
for three years that I've been friends with him, the one thing he has been hunting for more than anything, he wants the boat oh, in the box. Oh, yes, yes. It was there. It was in the basement. It was in that same basement. Yeah, and, and he's like, dude, straight up. How much for yeah. that boat? Just that, yeah. And yeah. the guy's like, you know, nah, I don't know what I want to do with that boat just yet. I don't think I'm ready to sell that. I swear to God, I saw one, <laughs> one tear just roll down. Yes. You know, just kind of like the, it was, it was so low. Yeah. It's right there. Oh, so he didn't get it? No. Not yet. No. But you no. never know. The guy yeah. might be willing to yeah, exactly. buy it, sell exactly. it in the future. I can't tell you how many times where I've gone, hey, I want that. And they're like, it's not for sale. And I'm like, remember me. Write my name on a piece of paper, put it underneath it. I don't care if it's a week, a year, five years. Whatever, when it when it's your time to sell, contact me. I'll oh, be yeah. the buyer, especially for some of those rare items that just oh, yeah, yeah. don't come off that often. And what's even funnier is how many requests I've had from people. You know, I shared on the Michigan Toy Traders that haul. Mm -hmm. And me and my buddy, we took maybe a fourth of what was in this guy's basement. And I, I can't tell, hey, can I come with you next time? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. We got mine. Yeah, we gotta keep those kinds of things secret. Um, and a lot of times people go, who's your source in such and such country of like where you're getting these rare foreign figures? I'm like, I'm not telling you my source unless my source is already out in the, in the open and has too much for me to even buy. But Now, uh, I might be willing, it's like, hey, you want to trade some info? Mm -hmm. You give you give me a honeypot, I'll let you share my honeypot. Yeah, and that kind of stuff happens. Now, you know, I gotta ask, because I have a fond appreciation for these. Um, I remember my brother, A. a. Ron, having them. Um, I love sharks growing a. up. A. Ron? Yes. <laughs> he was, <laughs> he wanted, um, I wanted to be an oceanographer. I had a fascination with the sea. I loved sharks. I loved, loved, loved these. Even though I didn't watch the cartoon, I remember my brother playing with them. And I have several loose ones in my personal collection. So now I want some mint in box. Is this something we could possibly work in a deal? And these are the two of my favorites. You just happen to have the two <laughs> ones that I like. The one with the roller blades and then the main guy. Ripster and blades. Yes. So you got 150 on both of them. So that's a total of what? One, uh, 300. Ah, 300. And here's where Justice Curry comes out. <sighs> You know I can't pay retail. Um, that's not even retail. Or not your retail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we all know. We yeah. all know. <sighs> all right, work with me in the price here. Now, again, I don't want to offend you and people at home. Too late. No. <laughs> I might. You might see a physical fight in front of you, or I might get uh, escorted off the property. But I, I have to ask. Like it, it hurts me. Um, how about? Let's do, could we come down to 80 bucks a piece, so 160 per <laughs> You're laughing! Is that a laughing as in deal? Is that a laughing as in yes? <laughs> oh, come on, How work about, with me a little bit. Um, 120. 120 for both? All right. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> 120 um, a piece. No, that's, that's, I, oh. Let's do 100 a piece, 200 bucks together. What's money between friends? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends, you know, like, I'm the one getting paid, and you're getting toys. <laughs> so I'll give you $200 um, in, in pennies. Oh, okay, get out. $100 bills, uh, okay, $100 bills. Right. You know what? Okay. Oh, thank you, Halloween Jack. Yeah, buddy, I appreciate yeah. that. Now, man. you've been scanning over everything. I have been. But there's something you have not seen, you missed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a toy that I was shocked when I found in this lot. You don't see these very often. They're hard to come across. Really? I just got chills in my arms. I, I'll, this I'll, is not I'll, staged. I'll, I'll, I have I'll, no idea what I'll it is. I'll give you a hint. Oh, no. It was a line that was meant to compete with Thundercats. Ooh. And not Silverhawks. Yeah. All right. I, I don't know, man. I really All don't right. know. 
You want to talk rare. All right, I want to show it to Justice off camera real quick. You remember these? Yes. Whoa. I've never held one, man. That is a uh, tiger shark. Whoa. He knows I even love sharks. Oh my gosh. I've seen people sell them online. I've never physically held one. That's awesome, dude. That is freaking, and it is, you're right. It did kind of try to compete with Thundercats. It had that same look, same feel. They had even probably the act. Oh, it works. Yes. It works, dude. Oh my gosh, yes. What in the heck, dude? That's awesome. That is really, really neat. I, I told you, man, I had something very, very rare. That's cool. What do you got? What's the price on there? He is 125. Not bad. Not bad. I don't even know what accessories came with him or anything. Um, I saw when I was pricing. I took the price of 125, which was about 10 bucks below the average selling price yep. of him loose with no accessories. That's crazy. With I, accessories, gotta be. I saw in the completed listing section, I only saw two card of the accessories. They each sold for 600 bucks. Oh! I mean, when you're talking a loose incomplete for 125, you know it's rare. And it's rare because it had a low production Low production number. rate, it didn't have a comic book or a cartoon show to help its sales. Right, so it just never took off. Now in the, us, our age, when we- In the aftermarket. In the aftermarket, we've seen everything, we know everything, and then people have a nostalgia, or they love the hunt for the rare ones. And that is definitely a rare one, wow. Thank you, thank you for showing me that. Oh yeah. Well, can we uh, dive in and check out your, your toy room? Oh, by all means. All right, so we'll be right back. <laughs>